An Apple Zero Day breaks out of OS X and iOS sandboxes, SAP installs get popped with default creds, and oh my god, 600 million vulnerable Samsung devices. Oh yeah, and did I mention free encryption keys for everyone? It's coming in a few weeks. All that and more right now on ThreatWire. I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is ThreatWire for Friday, June 19th, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom, and pretty cool InfoSec research coming out of a slew of universities titled Unauthorized Cross-App Resource Access on Mac OS X and iOS. Others are reporting it as a zero day against the Apple operating systems. The researcher's technology, they're calling it Zara, it's for the cross-app resource stuff that I just spoke about. Basically, it breaks out of the sandboxes that iOS and OS X use that make sure that each app can only read and write files of its own. So, for instance, if I'm like an Angry Birds app, I'm not allowed by the OS to see, I don't know, some files that you've got in your Dropbox app. It's really cool. It's great for security when it works. Well, with Zira, the team was able to actually steal, say, for instance, banking credentials from uh, Chrome on OS X, or even the system keychain and all of the iCloud tokens. Yeah. What's more, the researchers were able to get, get this a proof of concept app uh, actually approved by Apple in the App Store despite the supposed scrutiny by Apple security engineers. The team actually contacted Apple in October of last year, and then finally in February of this year, Apple asked for a six-month mum period. Well, time's up. There's still no fix. Good stuff coming out of Black Hat in the Netherlands. Gotta love the hackers in the Netherlands. This week, security firm ERP Scan disclosed, well, a pretty common practice that all IT administrators should be fairly familiar with. That's right, it seems that the vast majority of installs of the SAP relational database HANA, they use all the same master encryption key. So if you're wondering what the key is, no, it's not password one with a capital P, but it's just as terrible. To quote ERP Scan, according to our consulting services, 100% of the customers we analyzed still use the default master encryption key. Using the static key, an attacker could pull the credentials from the HBD user store table and decrypt them with ease. Ouch. This epic gem of a story is making massive headlines this week, and it's the sort of fail that I really thought the industry had gotten past. So it turns out Samsung, which integrates the Swift Key keyboard, uses HTTP to update language settings over the air. Well, what does that mean, and how does it make all of these devices vulnerable? Well, quite simply, say if, for instance, I'm the man in the middle between your phone and the internet, and I see that your phone is looking to update its keyboard settings and pull down new language files, I can pretend to be that server and then send you malicious code of my own instead of the legitimate update. Why does that able to even happen? Well, because Samsung delivers the update over HTTP not HTTPS. So I don't even need like a stolen key like in the Kapersky hack from earlier in this week. Um, which, by the way, like getting yourself a stolen certificate authority and things like that, not so easy. Those are pretty much like nation state level hacks, not like I'm gonna mess with your Samsung. So it's just making it really easy. Um, and what's actually <laughs> most worse here, most worse? What's most worse here is that the system update gets run as, as root. It's, it's system permissions. So I could inject some malicious code and then it would run as, as, as what? Samsung, just why, why? Sure, run everything as root, Samsung. Finally, I wanted to point out that the Let's Encrypt project has a go live date of September 14th. The project aims to make HTTPS encryption keys free for everyone so there's no excuse in using the plain text HTTPS. You hear that, Samsung? The service, which is backed by the likes of Mozilla, Cisco, and the EFF, will issue its first certificate key uh, in late July as a test, and they've developed a pretty slick setup, so I'm sure we're going to be talking about this even more as we get closer to the launch. Now, before I get going, I want to give a huge thanks to everybody that supported the relaunch of this show, patreon.com slash threatwire. That's the place where you can kick us some change if you're feeling generous, and there you can find all about the adorable pups that are being featured here, maybe even get your own. 
there. And we're going to go ahead and continue this three times a week rotation with Patrick Norton, Shannon Morris, and myself, and as we try to ramp up production. So thank you for your support. I hope that you will continue to help us keep this completely independent and ad-free. Uh, I can't begin to tell you how heartwarming it is to do this again. Uh, if you can't donate, a like, a share, a subscribe, all that goes a long way too. And you can find all of our past episodes, links to our social networks, and all that other good stuff over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen, and I'll see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.